Hi, this is Jamie Hadfield with the Legends Health, Wellness, and Performance po Podcast, and today we have Arlene Johnston, uh, a family, a doctor of family practice, and she also has her DMP. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. It's great <laughs> to be here. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, you are a functional medicine practitioner. How did you get into functional medicine, and why did you stray that way? So when people ask me. Um, why I decided in functional medicine. I kind of think, I don't know when I didn't do functional medicine. Um, when I was newly married and raising a family, I always like to look at root causes. Why are these things happening? Um, you know, what can we do to help support our body so that it can work the best way that it can? So I would say that probably I've always done functional medicine and always looked at root causes of why is the body doing what it's doing and how can we help support it so that it can do what it should be doing. So a lot of the research um, and the knowledge that I've gained, I've done on my own and attending different conferences um, where they've highlighted how to best approach, rich best approach uh, root causes of why um, disease processes happen in our body. And what's your clinic called? What's the name of the clinic? Um, so Health and Vitality. And Health and Vitality is a part of Integrative Health Group. And we're in Orem, Utah. I looked at your website. Uh, mm -hmm. prior to this and I saw that you had a couple different treatments with uh, radio frequency. Can you speak to those? Sure. So at Health and Vitality we do vaginal rejuvenation and we also do skin rejuvenation and the key component of those two is that we use radio frequency and radio frequency has been proven to um, tighten skin and to produce um, collagen neogenesis which is to produce new collagen and it does that without um, damaging the skin. And so we use the tools on the skin uh, along with a microderm um, abrasion and vaginally uh, we just use the radio frequency. So let's start just with the, uh, the vaginal uh, rejuvenation. What, what, is, what is it called? Yeah. The machine is called Votiva. The okay. procedure is a Votiva um, Forma V and, and Forma. And uh, the procedure consists of a wand that um, lubrication is put on, it's inserted vaginally, mm. and um, people will feel kind of a warming sensation. It's not an uncomfortable procedure at all. Radio frequency, um, the Votiva machine is special because it's um, bipolar radio frequency. Um, there are other devices that are monopolar mm. radio frequency, and um, the radio waves are sent in vaginally and then they're grounded on a pad in the back. However, with our device, the Votiva, it's bipolar and so the device itself has a positive and a negative electrode on it and so the radio frequency goes out into the vaginal tissue at a designated um, depth and then it returns back to the machine so you're not hitting any unintended organs in the process. Um, the machine is also temperature controlled. Um, between 40 and 43 degrees Celsius is where the tissue is warm to a point where it, that um, collagen regener regeneration starts and where um, tissue starts to tighten. And so, um, anyway, the procedure is not uncomfortable. So it's, it's not painful? Uh, nope, it's not painful. Um, people can resume their daily activities. It takes about um, 10 to 20 minutes and they're just in and out of the office. And is it one treatment? Is it two treatments? How many treatments do they need? So um, three treatments is um, generally what people, what women will need. Um, however, they, they get results with the very first treatment. So the very first treatment, they'll notice vaginal tightening. In fact, as I've done these procedures, I can feel the vaginal um, skin tightening around the wand as we get farther into the procedure. And so they'll get results with the first, um, the very first treatment. And then they'll wait uh, four weeks and have mm -hmm. the next treatment and then four weeks after that. And does it, does it affect the period or your hormones at all? So it does not um, affect hormones and it does not affect your period. You cannot have the treatment when you are actively having your period. Um, but other than that, it will not affect your period. Um, it doesn't change hormones per se. It revitalizes the vaginal tissue. And so it cre creates more elasticity, more collagen, and it tightens the tissue. So would women want to wait till after they had all of their childbearing and childbearing years over, or can you do it during childbearing, in between children? 
So that's a great question, and that's a great thing with the Votiva machine and with radio frequency is there are other options out there that are CO2 lasers, uh, and those are not um, approved for children of, or for women of childbearing years. However, the Votiva um, is approved for women of all ages. It does not cause um, tissue damage. It doesn't cause scarring. And so uh, as soon as about six to eight weeks after you've had a baby, you can start that vaginal tightening. Uh, well, a lot of women have uh, problems with urinary incontinence after they have a child. Does this help with that? Oh yes. In fact, this is one of the <laughs> this is one of the great um, the great things for this treatment is that women can walk out of the office and notice a difference in um, urinary incontinence, urinary leakage um, immediately after the treatment, and those results intensify two weeks to four weeks after the treatment. Okay, I know a lot of women complain of. Uh... Does it change the way it looks? <laughs> so it does change the way it looks and for the, for the positive. So um, the labia um, can become quite stretched and um, you can get a lot of, of tissue there on the outside externally on the labia. And uh, we do internal treatments that will tighten the, the vaginal skin internally and we also do external treatments. And those, the external treatments, um, it's amazing. As I've done that procedure, you can literally watch the labia kind of just come back together and seal up and, mm. and uh, look young again. Yeah, well, it's interesting because I, I work at a plastic surgery mm -hmm. office and we do uh, laminectomies. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, do, we do them quite frequently. Yeah. And would this be a replacement for yes. that? Yes, it would. So it's a non-surgical option for urinary incontinence, um, labia, um, yes. Okay. Uh, does, um, will, will your man notice? Definitely. <laughs> so the partners say um, that they love it. The sensation is greater because the, um, the vaginal area is much tighter. Okay. So. Does it, do you smell after it? Like a lot of women are really sensitive to smell. Like, do you smell after the procedure for a week or two weeks while the, that's healing? Okay, there is no, no adverse smell to okay. it whatsoever. Um, in fact, it does help to reduce um, vaginal discharge that can tend to be kind of smelly. Mm -hmm. um, it reduces the, incur the recurrence of vaginal infections. And so women that have recurrent vaginal infections, it's a great procedure for them because it will actually um, reduce and all but eliminate vaginal um, infections that keep reoccurring. Does it help with libido at all? It does. So as part of the external treatment, we focus on the clitoris and it actually improves sensation. And some women that have not been able to have an orgasm before will then be able to. Okay, wow, wow. Uh, so three treatments. Three treatments. They're four weeks apart. Yes. Okay, that's that's really great for 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 women. How much does it cost? So, the retail on it is about a thousand dollars a treatment. If you purchase a package of three, it's twenty seven hundred dollars. A lot of uh, women have anxiety with with sex, or somehow they've been uh, sexually abused. Does this uh, does this help lessen their anxiety at all, or what? What do you do for that? Because I would assume that those kind of questions come to you all the time. <laughs> so the procedure itself is not going to take away their anxiety. It will help to um, make sensation greater and better. It'll help the lax tissue to become tighter. Um, if women have vaginal dryness, um, it helps to take away that vaginal dryness because it replenishes the skin. It helps the, the vaginal um, skin, the collagen, regenerate, and so it actually will lubricate better. Um, it won't be so friable and, and sensitive. Um, so that part, it will help. I recently, I'm in the, everyone who follows the Legends podcast, you know I'm in the CBD world. and. I have recently came off across some research that CBD can help with uh, the circulation of that area. Have you done any research there? Um, I haven't done much research there. Okay. No. So, so tell me a little bit about how that works. <laughs> uh, 
Well, it so supposedly helps with uh, the circulation, uh, increasing the circulation, the sensation, and CBD has been known to actually help with anxiety as well, and it to to kind of calm down a, a woman or mind because your mind can get distracted. Uh, during sex or a lot of people for both men and women the mind actually can kind of get distracted so it does from my knowledge that I've read that it does help with that as well and a lot of people uh, CBD can be antibacterial and the antibacterial can help with urinary tract and uh, urinary tract infections uh-huh. that women are w- women are getting uh-huh. uh, yeah that is good <laughs> that's good yeah they would be great together. The, yep. the increase in blood flow to the area will definitely help the collagen to regenerate, um, the tissue to lubricate well, um, and to not be anxious for a sexual encounter would be would be great benefit as well. The collagen, let's kind of go there because when I think of collagen, there's a couple things I think of. I think one of the skin, I think collagen and the skin because the women are always promoting that. Mm-hmm. Is the, that collagen different than the vaginal collagen, you know, that we're trying to build up onto our women's faces? No, so collagen is what helps to keep our skin moist, keep it plump, keep it um, flexible, pliable, um, elastic. And so all that is important vaginally so that that tissue will be able to lubricate like it's supposed to, so that it will be able to feel sensation without um, excessive dryness, things like that. Okay. But you have a machine that does, it, it's a different machine that does the radio frequency for the face? Correct, correct. Okay. So we have a machine called the Fractora. The Fractora um, uses radio frequency along with microneedling. So it's oh. kind of a, a two in one. Um, you get results that can be even better than what you would get with a CO2 laser with not the downtime. Um, the, the lasers, um, your face kind of peels, it gets red, you have a lot of social mm. downtime, it's painful. Um, whereas with the Fractora, using the radio frequency, you have skin tightening, um, you have the microneedling, and um, people can wear makeup a day or two later, so you don't have a lot of social downtime. Um, it is a little bit painful because of the microneedling, so we will put um, numbing cream on the face mm. or the wherever that we're treating. Um, it's We've seen amazing results with acne and acne scarring. Um, it's good for active acne and it will actually reduce the occurrence of, of acne in the future. Um, it reduces the redness. Um, and the great thing about radio frequency is that it does not concentrate in the melanin and so um, skin types, all skin types can use the, the radio frequency with the microneedling. Hmm. Okay, I think there's, I want to kind of get into what microneedling is since you're, because I think um, sometimes I get confused in what it actually is. Okay, so the microneedling um, that we use with the radio frequency are little pins that poke down into the skin. So they are ablative, which means that they're going to penetrate the skin. Um, The vaginal treatment is not that way, it's just the radio frequency, but when we do it on the face, um, when we do the treatment on the face, it actually has micro needles that penetrate down, and then these needles actually carry the radio frequencies. There again, it's bipolar, and so the radio frequencies go down into the skin at a depth that that we've that we've controlled based on the tip that we choose, and it come, goes into the skin, and then it comes back again, and so it causes tightening of the skin. So um, women that get the procedure can look 10 years younger. You can do it under the chin. You can do it on the wrinkles around the. The eyes, um, it's like I said, it's great for the acne scarring. Does um, that take, how many treatments does that take? So it depends on what you're trying to do, um, but one to three treatments, um, including that would be for the acne as well. The acne ones are going to take a, a little bit more treatments. but Okay. Uh, I've heard hormonally mm-hmm. that acne could be affected by the balance of your hormones. What, what's the, what that is, is, that is correct. So at our um, clinic, we are going to help you address all the reasons why you would have acne. And um, too much androgen production causes acne. And so we would, we would um, draw labs, look and see where those hormones are imbalanced, and then help, help correct those. So we've just talked about the two procedures, but your real, your real niche is 
is trying to help find the root cause mm -hmm. of what's of what's going on. Is that in because your family practice is that across the the span? So it is. Um, I have worked with and I can work with patients of all ages. Um, I particularly like working with women, helping them with their hormones um, and men as well. Um, men have um, hormone imbalance as well. Um, low testosterone, too much estrogen, and those type of things can wreak havoc in a man's um, emotions, um, libido, um, sexual functioning, um, even blood sugars and red mm. blood cell production. So we like to help men and women balance their hormones. But what age does hormones typically get affected? Like yeah. is that a young thing or is that when you're in your 40s? Like when did the hormones typically become imbalanced? So that's a good question. Um, I actually see young girls that are 14, 15 and already ah. having hormone imbalance. So they'll have uh, periods not, that will be skipped for six, eight months. Um, they get acne from that. Um, but what, what makes the hormones periods. be imbalanced? Okay, so the root cause, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. The root cause of hormone imbalance. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, the sugar that we eat in our diets, the processed foods, um, high insulin production, um, dysregulated um, liver detoxing, um, our digestion, not absorbing the nutrients and things like that that we need. Okay, when you say nutrition, uh -huh. that that's a really broad term because there's you hear about the keto, the paleo diet. You've heard about every single diet, elimination diet. Right. So when you're, wh wh what is a healthy diet? When you're saying that diet affects the hormones, how does how does that come into play? So a healthy diet is going to be one um, that doesn't have a lot of sugar, that doesn't have a lot of refined processed foods. Um, it's going to be more whole foods, um, focusing on vegetables. Um, good quality proteins, good fats, um, and people are individualistic. And so some, some people are going to be triggered by gluten, others are going to be triggered by dairy, some will be triggered by corn. And so we like to kind of look at the root cause of what could be causing people to have, um, you know, a, a digestive system that's not working well. And um, Is that a blood test? How do you test for that? Yes. Yes, so it's we can. A, it's, a, yes. it is, it's a blood test. It's yes. not just an assumption. Nope. We can test and see if your body's responding poorly to um, many different um, foods that you would be eating. Okay. Uh, is that an expensive test? Um, <laughs> I guess based on your health, no. <laughs> um, two or three hundred dollars can give you a very comprehensive look at your allergies and um, and even um, insurance will cover some of those okay well. wow okay so you said diet what else did you say that affects the hormones you said does sleep affect the hormones so sleep affects the hormones um, stress affects the hormones your diet um, toxins in your environment also will affect hormones okay I want to go into a little bit more detail because I don't think people know what what does estrogen do in the body what does testosterone do in the body what what's the difference Okay, so testosterone in women um, helps mildly with the libido. It oftentimes will elevate right around ovulation. Um, estradiol in women um, helps to control blood sugars. It helps to um, have good bone health. It helps with our moods. Um, it's, it helps to produce melatonin, serotonin, so that we can sleep well. Um, it controls our menstrual cycle. So it oh. controls ovulation. So um, that's what's wrong yeah. with these 14-year-olds that are coming in? So the 14-year-olds that are coming in have high testosterone, and high testosterone is a result of high insulin. Uh, insulin triggers the ovaries to make more testosterone, and so testosterone is a much uh, stronger hormone than estrogen is. Um, and so anyway, the, they don't produce progesterone, the second mm -hmm. half of their cycle, because they're not ovulating, and it creates but, but a But I don't know what imbalance. progesterone is. Tell me what okay. progesterone is. <laughs> progesterone <laughs> um, is a hormone that's produced in women by the ovaries. It can also be produced by the adrenal gland. Um, progesterone's role is to maintain the uterine lining, the second half of a woman's cycle. 
So do all three of those, the, the progesterone, the estradiol, the estrogen, testosterone, do all three of those need to be in harmony for your hormones to work? Yes. Yes, they should all be balanced for you to feel emotionally stable, for your periods to work like they're supposed to, for you to be fertile. Um, your hormones should be balanced. Because well, I know there's bioidentical hormones mm -hmm. and there's other types of hormones. Is one better than the other? Um, yes. And not even just my opinion. Research has shown <laughs> <laughs> that um, bioidentical hormones are best and um, and are not do not cause uh, inflammation in the body, do not cause adverse effects. So yes, I would recommend bioidentical hormones. Do you do those in your clinic I, as we well? We do. We do. Okay, so I, what? How do you do? How do you give those? Is that a cream? Is that a pill? Is that a shot? What is that? Okay, so there's there are several different options. Estrogen should never be given orally, um, but you can take it as a cream. You can take it as a vaginal suppository, um, as a trochee. Um, progesterone can be micronized, bioidentical progesterone can be micronized and taken orally, um, and testosterone is given as a cream. Uh, because I know when, uh, let's say just 10, 15 years ago, I never even heard of hormones. Why have they become such a big buzz today? <laughs> so I think with our, with media, <laughs> uh, getting, th getting the word out there, people are are trying to to feel better, um, to live longer, and feel better as they live longer, and so there's more of a focus on that. Um, hormone restoration, hormone replacement therapy, has actually been around for for a long time, but we've now had a lot of research that's kind of helped to um, shed light on the fact that bioidentical hormones are better for for our bodies. All right, do they help the anti-aging process? Um, they do. They do. They keep our, so they, they help with many things. They help control, control blood sugar when our hormones are balanced. It helps to um, create strong bones. It heart, helps with cardiovascular, um, preventing cardiovascular diseases um, and heart health. How, how do women know and how do men know when they're, dispel, they're unbalanced? How, how, what are the signs? Because how would I even know that I needed to come in to see you? I might just be... Grumpy right. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be different for, for men and women. Um, men actually tend to start to feel a little bit of depression, um, lack of motivation. They just don't feel motivated. They might notice if they've always been somebody that goes to the gym that um, they just don't recover well from their workouts, that they can't build muscle. Um, women would notice if they... Um, Wow, women would notice lots of different <laughs> things. So they will have hot flashes. They'll just not have a lot of energy. Um, increased anxiety in women can be a hormone imbalance. Depression can be a hormone imbalance. Um, uh, unusual weight gain can be a hormone imbalance. So. But I think with aging, when you get in your 40s, maybe 50s, I think you just think that that is a part of old age. How, do you, how can you tell if that's just aging because I'm getting older versus a hormone balance. How do you tell the difference? So just because you're aging, you shouldn't have um, vaginal dryness. You shouldn't have um, mood swings. Um, if you're still having periods, your periods shouldn't be extremely painful. Your periods should be regular, you know, 25, 30 days, not one one month and not have one for three months or have one every 20 days with heavy bleeding, um, PMS is a hormone imbalance. You shouldn't have PMS. So those would be things that you would notice, and that's, that's not due to aging. Okay, what about, is that the same for men? So for men, yeah, men shouldn't experience depression just because they're getting older. They yeah. shouldn't experience um, lack of motivation and not being able to, to do the things that they used to and just because they're aging. Okay. Wow. Uh, that's a big impact on society, what you do. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. What, is there anything else? What else do you do at your clinic? Um, so we treat a lot of people with uh, thyroid problems. So um, autoimmune, Hashimoto's, Graves, 
Um, we work with a lot of people that have um, nutrient deficiencies because of poor um, digestion, so we help them work on gut health. Um, we see a lot of people that need to work on their detoxification pathways and to have detoxification supported. I know recently there's some articles that I've seen on websites that is leaky gut. People associate that with a lot of different things. Leaky gut is a term that's been used um, to describe loose junctions in the lining of our intestines. So our intestines, from our mouth to our anus, should be a closed system. It should not be open. And so when those junctions become loose, it lets out little microparticles into our body that, that shouldn't be in our body. Our body recognizes those as foreign and creates antibodies against them. And then when those foreign objects are, are identified and those antibodies are created, then those antibodies kind of roam around our body looking for similar looking proteins. And so it attacks different parts in our body. For MS, it would be the myelin sheath. For Hashimoto's, it's the thyroid. Um, any autoimmune is your body attacking itself. So signals are getting messed up. And that starts with um, inflammation in the gut and those gut linings. Um, and that's why we work on people with digestion, identifying what those triggers are, removing those triggers, restoring and healing that gut lining. Now, gut health is so important because if we're not absorbing the nutrients that are in our foods, we are going to be nutrient deficient. We are not going to have the cofactors um, that our bodies needs to, to do the different processes that, that it does. Um, and so restoring proper gut functioning, uh, storing acidity in your stomach so that your food can be broken down so your intestines can actually absorb the nutrients, all of that is important in disease prevention. Yeah, I know a lot of Americans believe or when they are trying they have obesity and they're trying to lose weight, they think that it's important just to count calories versus looking at the nutrition right. of food. So I can have five candy bars today because then that'll be my because <laughs> that's calorie yeah limit that's twelve hundred calories, right? <laughs> there you but go. how does so how does your body actually understand the nutrients that are that are getting absorbed? How does how does that work? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so when we eat something, for example, a candy bar, it does not have the nutrients in it that we need. Our our digestive system. Um, is very complex, but through osmosis, it's able to, to pull those nutrients out of our intestinal lining through uh, into our bloodstream, where then it's taken to the various different cells that it needs um, to be the cofactors in all of the enzymatic processes that the body does. Um, so our body, as far as weight loss, our body is pretty smart, and they used to say calories in, calories out, and that's so wrong because our body... When we reduce the calories that come in, mm. our body just drops its metabolic rate. When we increase the calories that are coming in, our body just raises its metabolic rate. And so, you know, in essence, when we are dropping our, new, our calories, um, we're signaling our body that it needs to, to you know, shut down its, its production. Um, so women, we need to eat energy. more food. Yes, <laughs> yes. We eat more food. We Typically, appropriate yeah, food. well, I think, yeah. I think... I, somewhere I read an article and it said uh, typically women don't eat enough and that's why they are holding on to the or holding on to the weight mm -hmm. or can't lose the weight because they're not eating, eating enough. enough. Yes, yes. And I believe that, and I believe it has to be the the enough of the right things. So uh, more candy bars wouldn't qualify, but enough um, good proteins, uh, good fats. Um, and lots of vegetables. Do you believe, so you believe, when you say good proteins, mm -hmm. is that a, is that meat? Is that, do you believe so in I vegetarianism think, I think or no, veganism? I think, I think that meat is uh, good for our bodies. Um, I, when I say good proteins, we need to look for proteins that aren't loaded with toxins. So that becomes hard for our liver to, to detox and to process and, and puts a, a strain on the system. Okay, toxins with meat is what? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so toxins with meats could be it could be hormones. It could be the way that it was processed. Um, the, the things that the um, 
the animals were fed and the different injections that the animals were given. All of those could, could um, be considered toxins. What does the body do with toxins in the body? So the liver has to process the toxins. Um, when the liver kind of gets bogged down because we eat um, a lot of sugar and processed foods, mm -hmm. and the liver has to package all that and, and process all that, and so then when we add toxins, um, our, our body just can't keep up with, with getting rid of them, and they build up in our body. Okay, uh, how do we get rid of the toxins in our body? Okay, so we, we clean up our diet and um, remove those foods that, that are going to be loaded with toxins and remove the foods that put such a strain on our, our liver, which would be then again the sugars and the refined and processed foods. Uh -huh. um, and then um, restore balance through providing the, the nutrients that the, the body needs. There's also a gene mutation called the MTHFR gene mm. mutation that is important in uh, methylating. Methylating is a process where a carbon and three hydrogens are added to something to make it active. It's also the process by which the body um, gets rid of, of toxins and detoxes the, the liver. And so that's just one of the pathways that we can kind of clean up and support so that our body does a better job of detoxing. Uh, do you believe everyone should get a genetic test? Um, I think definitely if they have symptoms that they should get, get a genetic test. Um, you can be treated without a genetic test. Mm -hmm. However, it does help you to recognize that whether or not that is going to be a pathway that you are going to have to support more intensively than somebody else that might not have that gene mutation. Because I know there's uh, nutrition genetics mm -hmm. and I know there's pharmacology genetics. Okay. Uh, what's what is the nutrition looking at and what is the pharmacology? I mean, that, that's kind of a so that, question, but what, the, from, a, from a practitioner's point, what, what, what are you looking at there? So the nutrition um, genetics is how your body's going to process the different nutrients that you're going to bring into your body. So your vitamins, B12, folate, vitamin D, um, Pharmacokinetics mm -hmm. is how those how medications or how foods or how things are processed in your body, how your body um, metabolizes those, and so those are they're similar in helping to look at the needs of an individual, um, mm -hmm. but they're different. So one looks at kind of how the body is going, what the body's going to do with that, and the other one looks at how well the body can assimilate. What about all these other environmental factors that come into play? How, how do they affect your health? So there's a term called epigenetics and how it, it changes our genes um, as, we're, as we're living and then we pass those on to our, to our children. But it's really, um, it's really those things that you're talking about in our environment, the toxins, um, different things that we're consuming that kind of change, they, they turn on or turn off gene expression which can make us susceptible to diseases and things like that when we have certain genetic things that are turned off or that are turned on hmm. from things in our environment. Hmm. This has been really insightful. How do, we, how do we find you? How do we connect with you if I wanted to see you as a patient? Okay, so you can go to the Health and Vitality uh, Utah .com uh -huh. website. Um, you can call 801-921 um, 2260. <laughs> um, we are in Orem. You can also look up the Integrative Health Group um, website as well and um, give us a call. We would love to see you and to help you um, find the root cause of your symptoms.